Hey everyone, it's Casey here from BlueHouseDigital.com, and today we're going to be diving into RealFlow 5. So what we're going to be creating is this quick animation that you're seeing right now. Um, one thing that I should mention is that in order for the simulation to work, you're going to need to download the Exchange plugin uh, for RealFlow. You can go right online to uh, RealFlow.com and download their Exchange plugin uh, so that your version of Cinema 4D can import and export meshes to RealFlow. Uh, so with that being said, um, let's hop right in. Uh, just a quick note, next week we're going to be doing a Microsoft-themed uh, animation with the new, newer version of Cinema 4D R13, dealing with the physical render settings, and we're going to be talking about uh, the spline wrap uh, tool. So stick around for that. Uh, let's get started, though. So the first thing we're going to need for this animation is well, a number five, and I'm just going to... Add some quick mo text. I'll bring up the depth to about 30. We're not going to have to mess with any subdivision. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is this is going to be basically a placeholder that we're going to use to fill up with water. But in order for us to do that, we're going to need a hole to be able to put the water in. So we're just going to do some quick uh, chopping with a knife tool. Let me grab this right here. I'm going to press C and make it editable. And I'm going to go right click on the text object and go to select children, see again on the keyboard, right click, select children, and then I'm going to go right over to the structure. I'm going to select the knife tool and I change the mode to loop, just a little bit easier for me to work with and wrap my head around. So let me go ahead and start with this. I'm going to make uh, four cuts. One here kind of at the base, one a little bit higher, and just cut a little square right out of the inside of that five. Select over here, grab my selection tool, and just delete. Simple, simple and easy. Very painless, like I like to model. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on the text object and we need to make this a uniform polygon shape. So we're going to right click and we're going to say select children again, C, right click, connect and delete. So now that this is a uniform uh, polygon object, we can export it using our RealFlow Exchange plugin. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is to go to our plugins, RealFlow, and then RealFlow uh, SD Exporter. And th this little pop-up will come up. Uh, I have a little folder that's on my desktop for, for putting these files. Let me find it right there, RealFlow Tutorial. And I'll just say, we'll save it there. Um, the default frames in RealFlow is 200, so we're just going to set our end frame at 200. We can increase it uh, in RealFlow and export it back uh, longer than 200 frames, which you'll see, but uh, it's just always best to start with 200 frames going in. And then we want to grab all of our objects here, um, and I'm just going to hit Add All. Um, if you're doing a much larger scene and you only want to bring certain elements over, you can pick and choose uh, which objects you want to export. So I'm going to click on Export and be done with that. My computer's there it's thinking for a little sec. And now we're going to head over to RealFlow. Okay, so now that we're in RealFlow, let's go ahead and start building some meshes. The first thing we're going to need to do is import our SD file from Cinema. And I'll go to our desktop. Uh, RealFlow tutorial, RealFlow SD. And just some quick navigation information. If you hold Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and click, you can orbit around. You can change viewports by using the numbers on, on your keypad. So one is going to be a top view, two is front, three is side, and four is perspective. Um, just some quick uh, navigation. W is going to be your position. E is going to be your uh, rotation. And R is going to be scaling. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is go to our daemon tab and grab some gravity and go over to our emitter. And since we have a square hole, it would make sense to get a square emitter. 
So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to do some resizing and repositioning on this emitter so that it fits right in the little hole that we modeled out. So I'm going to press R on the keyboard and let's bring this thing, scale it way down. And I'm going to press W and kind of bring it closer to the end of the five. E again really needs to be real small because if it's too big it will push water outside of the five and we don't want that to happen so I'm going to press E, I'm going to rotate it. You can see which way the emitter is pointed by this little green arrow sticking out right here. I'm going to press 2 and go to the front viewport. Go up. Looks like we're, we're just about right there. Press 4. Ooh, definitely doesn't look like that over here. I'll press 1 and check a top view and set it right there. Maybe ooh, lost it. Maybe bring it out just a tiny bit. And let's just take a quick look. Uh, we'll bring our timeline back to 0 and we'll simulate. That's fine. And it looks like our emitter is too big because we have water coming out and we don't want that. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is come over and scale her down again. And I'm going to change my viewport, my scene shading to uh, smooth shaded. And you can press zero on the keyboard to get that too. Um, so R again and really get that nice and small. And just set it right inside. I'm going to go back, re-simulate. There we go. And that's what we're looking for. And we can actually see the water going through if we switch back to our viewports. Wireframe is 8. I always seem to forget that. Um, and simulate forward. So we'll let this go for about 200 frames. My original animation that you saw was 1,000 frames. Uh, so it was quite uh, a long bit of rendering. And I actually kind of quit. That's why there was... Uh, little jumps in time when you watched it because I just wasn't willing to wait that long for kind of a short little animation or something that should be a short animation. So what we're going to do after we simulate this is we're going to go and start looking at some of the node parameters of the water. Actually, we need to do that before we simulate. Look at me getting ahead of myself. All right, first thing that we need to do is we'll click on our our particle emitter, and I'm going to change my resolution to 3. Um, go back to the 4. Click on resolution here, change that to 3. If you're doing uh, you know four client projects, I would bring that up to maybe 10. Um, but this will increase your simulation time, so do keep that in mind. Uh, viscosity, this is how viscous your water system is. Uh, the larger the number, the thicker the uh, the amount of, or whatever type of liquid you're creating. So if, if you're doing like a, a chocolate on a candy bar, that would probably be somewhere in the like 10 range. Uh, I'm going to leave this at 3.5. Um, a lot of times if you're putting water not in an object, but you're doing it uh, like over text, you would want to bump up your particle friction on your actual text object to something around 0 0.004 or to 0 0.007, somewhere in there. So that kind of gives um, a little bit more of a real effect. But for what we're doing now, um, that particle friction is fine. So. Uh, in terms of speed, if I want to really crank up this animation, which, well, since we're only doing 200 frames, uh, yeah, let me let me bring that up. I'll I'll change the speed to eight and my V random to 0.5. V random is just ooh, excuse me is just going to keep things from um, coming out uh, n in not such a, a uniform way and we kind of give it a little bit of a real feel to it. So now that we got uh, those set up, I'm going to go back and hit simulate. And I'll be right back once this is done simulating. Okay, so we're back. Uh, the simulation has just finished calculating all of the fluid dynamics. Uh, I actually went and stopped the simulation. I brought my speed up to 10 uh, just because I wanted to fill this 5 up as fast as possible. Um, but it's kind of really for your taste and um, what kind of look you're going for. So 
Uh, now we're ready to start meshing. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is go up here and click on our mesh and click on Particle Mesh Render Kit. And here there's just a few settings that we're going to have to change. If we go into Filters, we want to turn Filters on. And I want to bring the relaxation to something 0 0.6. 0 .0 0.6 is fine. Limit the steps to 1. Uh, tension is fine. Our polygon size, uh, we're going to bring that down to 0 0.04. It will just give a smaller, more fine uh, polygon. will kind of come out nicer when we render in cinema. So uh, we're going to zero at the timeline, bring this back. And we're going to, well, actually, if we're here in the middle, you can click on this Build Mesh tab. And you can see, b based on the render kit, press uh, 0. You can see uh, that we, we're, our mesh is kind of pumping out a little bit uh, from the 5, which is all right. And it kind of gives uh, a little, little bit of a nice fluid look. If you press 8, we'll go back to wireframe. And... Uh, we can kind of scrub through and now we're going to build the mesh for the entire system so if we go up here we click on build mesh and now we just wait for the meshing to be built so um, I'm going to take this time to kind of change videos uh, we'll go to part two of this tutorial uh, in the next video right underneath this so stick around for that we're going to do some lighting we're going to bring all of our meshes into cinema and start working with them in there so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video